Well, like I said, my name is Pastor Brian, and I'm going to be sharing with you God's Word today. If you have your Bibles, hopefully you do, turn with me to the book of Psalm, chapter 119. There's a lot of them in Psalm, but Psalm 119, we'll get there in just a moment. Has anybody ever booked a hotel, and before you booked the hotel online, you read the reviews, whether they were good or bad? You know, certain star ratings, good reviews, bad reviews, all that kind of stuff. Uh, thankfully, because of those reviews, that has kept us from going certain places, right? And it also has propelled us to go other places. Um, if you've ever had some barbecue, Wabash Barbecue is wonderful. Uh, I cannot speak highly of it. It's this little old train depot that they've converted into a place to eat some greasy barbecue, and it's wonderful. So anyways, anytime someone speaks highly of something, we tend to lean in and listen closer. And um, thankfully, because of those people, we, can, we, we go to a place or we don't go to a place where we avoid things or we do go to things. Um, I want you to know that the, the psalmist, the writer of Psalm 119, cannot speak highly of the word of God. In the entire Psalm of 119, he is bragging about the Bible. He's talking it up. He's bragging about it, speaking highly of it. And I want you to know that that is a review that we can trust because it's 100% accurate. It's 100% true. Uh, the author is so excited. He's saying it's trustworthy. It's dependable. Up on the screen, there'll be some verses from 119. and verse 18, it says, he says, open my eyes that I can see wonderful things in your law. Verse 24, he says, your statutes are my delight. They are my counselor, counselors. Uh, verse 30, I have chosen the way of truth. I have set my heart on your laws. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. And on and on and on this goes. I challenge you this week to read the entire Psalm 119. There's 176 verses. It'll take you a little while. And if you're like me, I, I read in small chunks at a time, so I re can retain it and remember it. So it, it'll take you a while, possibly, but read through it. Um, there's different words that the author uses to describe the Bible itself. And so through, this is kind of a theme throughout all Psalm 119. Um, he calls the, the Bible law or laws, testimonies, commands, statutes, ordinances, precepts, promise, the way. And for most of those, those are mentioned over 20 times just in Psalm 119 alone. So I think the author is pretty excited about the Word of God. And it's kind of neat that the longest chapter in the Bible, almost dead center in the Bible, close to it, is bragging about the Word of God and the importance that it is in his life and how important it needs to be in our life. And so I want you guys to know before you get too comfortable in your seats or maybe start to check out um, to think and know that this is not a read your Bible more type of a message. All right, that's, that's not the goal. It's just, well, we got to get out and read the Bible more. That's what, that's what the preacher says. It's nothing like that, okay? I'm gonna, we do need to, yes. But, but the challenge is, 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 is this, is let's evaluate the importance and the value that it has in our lives. It's beyond just reading. We can read any book. But what, what value does the Word of God have in your life? Is it prominent? Is it noticeable in our lives? And at the end of my message, I'm going to ask you an important question. Um, how many of you like to camp? Any campers here? Yeah, how many non-campers? You avoid it like the plague, all right? Uh, I'm kind of in the middle, um, and I'll get to that in just a minute. But I have some pictures. I want to see who can relate to some of these pictures. The first one is this. Like, it, this is kind of rustic type camping. Just give me a tent. Give me an open fire. I'm good. How many of you like that? That's your type of camping. Okay, you'll figure it out as you go type. That's not me. The next one is this. You have a tent, but you have a great view. How many of you could handle the tent camping if you have a view like this, right? A little bit better. How many of you say this is your type of camping up on the screen? Yes. <laughs> Too quickly, so many hands went up, all right? Uh, give me, that's by the ocean, by the way. That would be a wonderful place. I could probably live there, actually. Uh, I want my, the conveniences of home, but you're not at home. It's kind of thing. How many of you, this, would, this is your type of camping, this final one? Yes? Give me the hotel and uh, the mountain, and then you can go hike for a couple hours and then soak in the hot tub, okay? By the way, man camp is not going to be the first picture, okay? We're not roughing it in the woods, fighting off mosquitoes and all that kind of stuff. That won't be the case. But uh, 
when you're in love, you do things that you normally wouldn't do, correct? Those of you who, who are married or even dating now, maybe like eat sushi or, or write really long love letters that you normally wouldn't write until your hand cramps up. Uh, for me, it was camping, all right? So I'm, uh, Jamie and I, my, before we were married, uh, we dated. That's, that's what you do. And so as we're dating, uh, her family, extended family on her mom's side, takes annual camping trips. And so I'm like, yeah, sweet, let's go. Let's be awesome, you know. And so little did I know that what I was getting myself into, uh, first of all, their extended family is like pushing 40 to 60 people. It's a really big family. And I come from like on my mom's side, I have three cousins. That's it. And so th- it was culture shock. Um, so we get to Itasca State Park up in Minnesota where the Mississippi River starts. And uh, it looked more like the first picture that I showed you. Like, give us a tent and an open fire, and we're good. And so I'm like, all right, that we, can, we can manage. This is okay. We can do it. Um, little did I know that uh, I would keep the Deep Woods Off Company in business because of this, the state bird up there is the mosquito. It's so big, all right? Uh, it's hot. It's humid. It's in the middle of summer, and we're in kind of the woods area like this. And I'm, I'm with people. I know four of the 40. And so it, it wasn't like the greatest thing. Um, a snoring uncle, like they forgot to say, oh yeah, by the way, this guy, he usually sleeps all by himself because, because he snores so bad. Well, thank you. Be, I didn't have to be in that tent with him, but did you know that tent walls don't block out noise? Okay. Um, oh, by the way, there, there were very big mosquitoes there. And, and you know, when you go camping, after you shower, this was me, I would step out and, and the mosquitoes were like leeches on you again. So you would shower in the deep woods off again, you know. And so, but when you're camping, you quickly realize there's some essentials that you need for camping or for a hike. Um, the water, the food, the fire, the tent, the bug spray, maybe a lantern or a flashlight. Um, if you are familiar with Bear Grylls, he's like this crazy outdoors guy. This is his, Google it, his, bear, his essentials for camping, hiking. I don't see a tent. <laughs> I don't see any food. I don't see any water, nothing like that. Um, he's got a knife, a tiny flashlight, a compass, some waterproof matches, and a whole lot of band-aids. And uh, that's it. And if, how many of you have seen his TV shows, Surviving with Him or whatever? He's nuts. Like, he's, he'll, like, I saw him one time. He took his shirt off. He jumped on top of a skunk and, and stabbed it and then skinned it and ate it. Okay, that's how crazy this guy is. And for me, I'm like, I, I, I can't do that. Anyways, that's, that's his very essential. So there's, there's essentials that you need for camping and on a hike. And one of them needs to be some type of light, correct? Some type of lantern or whatever it may be. Because if you want to try to do anything at night, especially, you need a lantern like this. And I want you guys to know, and we'll get to Psalm 119 in just a moment. But if you, are, you and I, if we try to go through life, if we try to navigate through life, without the Word of God lighting our path, we're struggling and we're straining in our own strength more than we should be, correct? We need the Word of God to lead us and to guide us. In Psalm 119, 105, up on the screen, you can read along, it says, Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light for my path. Going through life without the Word of God, lighting our lives and lighting our path is like walking through the forest or walking in the dark without anything. We might be able to survive a few steps, but we need a light and we need the word of God. And so my challenge is this, is that my prayer is also that, that the word of God would take a greater prominence in our lives, every one of us, pastors included, that the word of God would be more important to us than it ever has before. Because Listen, we can get updates on our phone of all the latest news that's happening. You've probably received notifications on your phone since we've been here at church. You know, this and this is happening um, in the world today. And we can be so stuck on those things that we forget that God's word is constant and it's faithful and it's true and it's accurate. And this is what we need to stay glued to more than anything else. I'm not saying the news is bad, but we need to cling to the word of God. So as we walk through this path of life, there's a few things that I want to remind us of what God's word provides. Okay, there's several things that God's word provides. 
Um, I would just want to share a couple of them with you. First of all, God's word provides truth. God's word provides truth. If you use GPS, there's a couple of ways that you can go about it. You can have the, first of all, the overall view, like this on the screen. So blue dot is where I live, red dot is us right now here at New Hope. Uh, And if I wanted to, I could probably keep it on that view and I would be able to see it as an overall picture of where I'm going. Most of us use this next view of just turn by turn direction. You know, it says in 600 feet, turn right onto 70th Street and then your destination will be on the left. Um, Those types of things, that's wonderful and that's what most of us use. Think of the Word of God, think of the Bible as turn by turn directions. Think of the Bible as the GPS of turn by turn directions. You know, the GPS isn't like just suggestions. It's not opinions. It's the truth, right? Like here's how you get to this destination. Yesterday we drove to Cedar Falls for a birthday party and I had no idea where I was going so I just punched in the address and I was totally depending upon that. Sure enough, it led us right to the place. Um, The Word of God is not a bunch of suggestions. The Word of God is not a bunch of opinions. The Word of God is truth. It's accurate. It's dependable. The psalmist in 119, he's describing the Word of God as a lamp for his feet and a light for his path. He is trusting in the Word of God. Just like we trust the GPS, he's trusting in the Word of God. God's Word is reliable. God's Word is uh, trustworthy. God's Word is steadfast. It hasn't changed. The Word of God was powerful Uh, for your grandparents and your great-grandparents, and it's still powerful today. It it shines enough light for the the youngest person in this room to the oldest person in this room. God's Word is reliable. God's Word is not a source of truth. It is the source of truth. It's not greater. uh, It's not equal to other truths. It's greater than other truths. Check out what 2 Timothy 3.16 says. All Scripture is God-breathed, and it's useful for teaching rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. The truth will teach you. The truth will rebuke you. The truth will correct you. The truth will train you, raising us up to be men and women of God, not dependent on feelings all the time, but being dependent on the rock, the solid word of him. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and active, It's sharper than any double-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. Leave that up there real quick. Think about this. This sharp sword of the word of God cuts into the innermost being of our lives to the point where um, it can judge our thoughts and our motives, whether they're spiritual or unspiritual. That's how powerful the word of God is. And the great thing is, it's alive. Right? This isn't something that um, we have to pray that would come alive. It's already alive. R.C. Sproul has a quote. He says, I can't make the Bible come alive for anyone. The Bible is already alive. It makes me come alive. And that's so true. The Word of God makes us come alive. God's Word provides truth for our lives. God's Word also provides wisdom. This wisdom is approaching life from God's point of view and believing that everything God says is right and true. You know, the book of Proverbs in the Bible is known as the book of wisdom. And the Bible is full of wisdom, but specifically the book of Proverbs zeroes in on it. The book of Proverbs says that gaining wisdom is better than silver and gold. And we can have all the riches in the world, but if we don't have wisdom, we've lost. Proverbs 4, 7 says that it's supreme to get it. Though it costs all you have, get wisdom. James 1, 5 says, if anybody lacks wisdom, he should ask God, and it will be given to him. Proverbs 1, 2, speaking of the word of God, it's, it's therefore attaining wisdom and discipline for understanding words of insight. So I challenge us today to read a proverb a day. There's 31. So today is September 4th, correct? So read Proverbs chapter 4. Tomorrow read Proverbs chapter 5. Do that over and over again, and you're going to begin to see life the way that God sees it, and you're going to attain the wisdom that you need from God. God's Word, listen, will provide you the wisdom that you need in dealing with difficult people, right? How many of you have difficult people in life? Okay, that happens. God's Word will help you with that. God's Word will help you in forgiving those difficult people. I mean, if anybody set the example, it's Jesus. How do we know about Jesus but from the Word of God? How did he deal with difficult people? 
and loving the unlovable, of avoiding sin, of dealing with sin, and understanding in difficult situations. You know, the Word of God says that God will give us a peace that surpasses understanding, and it'll guard our hearts and guard our minds. That'll happen. I want you to know that even though God's word has full, is full of wisdom, it may not give you the 10 or 15 year plan for your life. Especially young people and in college, you're wondering, what does God have planned for me? Well, you may not know in 10 or 15 years what God has planned for you, but you will know possibly the next step. Think about this. In 105, he says, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Well, if, if this is lit, and you can leave the lights on for now. Uh, if this is lit and I'm up here, it doesn't help my feet down here, does it? But if I have the lamp down low, then I can see where I'm going, and, and I can see. I may not see down to the end of the path, but I can see it at my feet, and I can see what the next step is. That's what the Word of God does. He provides wisdom. You know, sometimes God just wants us to be still. How many of you read that verse in Psalms? Be still and know that I am God. Sometimes that's what God wants us to do, is just be still. And, and instead, we're wanting to go to the next thing. And so sometimes we'll set the word of God down and try to do things on our own. And we stumble and we fall. So God's word provides truth. It provides freedom, um, wisdom. And finally, it provides freedom. Too many times we focus on the verses that say, May you are loved. You are accepted by God. Uh, he has a plan for your life. You're blessed. We love those verses. But when it comes to the verses that call out sin in our life, when, the, when it calls out behavior in our life that needs to change, it's not easy always to read, is it? James chapter 1, verse 22 to 25 says this, Do not merely listen to the word and so deceive yourselves. Do what it says. Anybody who listens to the word but doesn't do what it says is like a man who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like. But the man who looks intently into the perfect law that gives, what? Freedom. And continues to do this, not forgetting what he has heard, but doing it, he will be blessed in what he does. How crazy would that be if you woke up this morning and you looked in the mirror and you got the crusties in your eyes and you got the bedhead going on, kind of like Pastor Luke, and, and you're like, uh, I'm just going to go to church like this. I know I, I have stinky breath and, and I need to do some things, but eh, it's no big deal. It's kind of like us. We read the word of God and it says, you know what? Uh, if anyone has hatred in his heart, like Jesus says, it's like murder. Or if anyone looks at someone lustfully, it's like committing adultery in your hearts. And we read those verses and we're like, eh, it's, it's all right. I really don't like that one, but I'm going to read the one that says he has a plan for my life. I like that one. Listen, we, we, have to, we can't just be readers of the words. We have to be doers of the word of God, true? We have to apply it to our life. We can't just come on Sunday morning and expect the pastor to teach us and then leave and say, well, I'm good. Several years ago, I was uh, not the greatest at um, always being kind with my words. And um, I was pretty sarcastic, and I still can be sometimes, so I apologize if I do. But um, I read Ephesians 4.29 that says this, don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth but only what's helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it will benefit those who listen. When I read that, I was struck between the eyes with the truth. God's word was lighting my path. And then I read another verse that says, life and death is, uh, the power of life and death is held in the tongue. And I realized that my conversations didn't always lift people up, and my conversations didn't always benefit those people that were listening. And though it wasn't easy, and I didn't want to read that, I knew it was true. It was that double-edged sword cutting. And I began to ask God for help and freedom, and, and it has taken time, and I, I still, I'm not perfect, but I can honestly say that God has helped me. Why? Because his word is powerful. His word provided freedom. Psalm 119 verse 9 says, How can a young man keep his way pure? but by living according to your word. We want to live a pure life. We have to live according to the word of God. Verse 11 says, I've hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Listen, let's decide to remain loyal to the word of God. When, when everything else is happening outside in our world today, let's decide to remain loyal to God's spoken word to us. Let's memorize it. Let's delight in what it says Consider the outcomes of following and not following it. And never be too busy. 
to study and read it. Walking on this dark path with a lamp by your feet. Listen, God's word will reveal things in your life so that you don't stumble and fall. That sin that so easily entangles us, God's word can light the next step for you so that you don't get tangled up in it. That's how powerful the word of God is. The word of God will lead us into freedom. In the book of Joshua, God was instructing Joshua of what is about to take place in the very first verses in Joshua chapter one. Moses has died and the promised land has been sitting there for years. And and God says, now that Moses has died, Joshua, I want you to lead the people across the Jordan into the land that I've promised. And three times in the first like 10 verses, he says, be strong and courageous. Be strong and be very courageous. Be strong and courageous. And he's, he's building him up. And I noticed this the other day when I read this. Out of all the biggest things that are about to take place for the Israelites and for Joshua, listen to what God says to Joshua in verse 8. We've read this before, but do not let this book of law depart from your mouth. Guys, consider what's happening, what's about to take place. And here's what God says. Meditate on it day and night. And be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. Joshua's life is about to get really busy and really crazy and very stressful. And God thought it so important that he would... Take a moment, and I'll encourage them to be courageous, but say, listen, don't let this depart from your mouth. Meditate on it. Take time every day to to read upon it, to study it, to pray through it. It's powerful. It's effective. The hard part is doing that takes work, doesn't it? It's effort. Let's be honest. It's much easier coming Sunday morning or Wednesday night to a class and letting someone tell us what the Word of God says, right? In Psalm 119, a couple times, just before 105, he says, uh, I'm smarter than all my teachers because I've put this into practice in my life. I've studied it. I've, I've prayed through it. And I'll be the first to admit, it's, it's easy to come here and let Pastor Weaver do the teaching for us or Pastor Jeff do the teaching, and then we can leave and say, think we're okay. But man, this is meant to be Study. This is meant to be applied to our life. It's living. It's active. It's here for us. As the worship team comes up on the screen, there's a quote that I read this week from R.C. Sproul. It says, We fail in our duty to study God's word, not so much because it's difficult to understand, not so much because it is dull or boring, but because it's work. Our problem isn't a lack of intelligence or passion. Our problem is we're lazy. I want you to know that this is not a book that we pick up when life is tough. When the path is too dark and we're like, "Uh uh-oh, I need a bailout. So we open up God's word and we just kind of, how many of you have ever done this before? You kind of just like close your eyes and you're like thumbing around, boom. All right, that's what God wants me to learn today. That's not what it is. That's like on the dark path, you turn the light on for a split second and then you turn it back off. What's the point of that? Think about this, that God's word cannot be a lamp to our lives until we're saturated in it. And that's my prayer is that we'd be saturated in the word of God. That, that this would become so much ingrained in our DNA, a part of our lives that, that we exuberate it, that, that we, we talk about it, that it's upon our lips at all times. It's not a crystal ball that we look to when we need direction or help on a dark path. But man, this, is, this illuminates our life. If I could go back to the camping illustration for a moment. How many of you have been camping and you've tried to set up camp in the dark? Yeah? A tent, whatever it may be. Probably not the wisest thing to do if you're, uh, you know, wanting to go into marriage counseling because it probably speeds that up, you know, makes you fight a little bit more, right? But here's why, because you're tripping over the cooler, you stub your toe on the fire pit, your kids are hungry, and you're trying to do this all in the dark, and you're tired, and you want to be respectful of those around so you don't turn your lights on, the headlights on. And so you're doing this all in the dark. And you're like, man, we've got to be having fun right now, right? This is the goal. Like, we're out to have fun and, and bond as a family. And you're thinking, man, what is the deal? And the whole time you're doing this, why? 
because to be with family, but it's difficult because it's dark. You're in the dark. And the whole time you're struggling and you're fighting and trying to figure this out, and the whole time there's a light that's available. And how crazy would that be to set it off to the side and walk over and try to assemble the tent over here when the light is on the other side and isn't really helping you. We have the, the light. The word of God is powerful. And we have that at our disposal. And so why try to operate our lives in the dark? We live in a dark world, don't we? Our, our world needs the light. Our world needs a foundation, the word of God to guide. And, and we need that also. We need to be guided by the word of God. So I want to challenge us here. Let's, let's have the Word of God be more prominent in our lives than it ever has been before. Some of you, you're like, I don't even know where to start reading in the Bible. And some of you have been reading the Bible your entire life. And this is for all of us here. Let's make the, the Bible more prominent and more important, more valuable in our lives than it ever has been before. Check out what the psalmist says in Psalm 119, verse 138. You can turn the lights back on. The statutes that you have laid down are righteous. Look, look what he says. They are fully trustworthy. That's awesome. Verse 140 says, Your promises have been thoroughly tested. God's word has been thoroughly tested. And your servant loves them. Man, I hope that you leave this morning knowing that the Bible is trustworthy. I hope you leave this morning knowing that God's word is powerful for your life. And so I told you I was going to ask you an important question, and here's the important question. Where in your life are you not trusting the Bible? Where in your life are you not trusting the Bible? Is it financially? Relationally? For, forgiving those difficult people? How to love them? Healing? Only you can respond to this today. Where in your life are you not trusting the Bible? Would you stand with me? In just a moment as we sing, we chose this song because the lyrics are so rich with the truths of God's word. But let's pray first. God, thank you for your word. Your word that truly is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. God, I pray that you would help us to read it, to study it daily, that this would be so ingrained in us. God, that it would go beyond head knowledge and be transferred into our heart by your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, illuminate the Word of God even more. May we not be lazy, but I pray that we would know that this is so valuable for ourselves, for our family, and for our friends. And God, if there's any area in our lives that we are not trusting you fully with the Bible, with the Word of God, would you reveal it to us? Just like that double-edged sword, would you reveal things in our hearts that we need to change? We love you so much. Would you sing this song, I Believe? I believe in God our Father. I believe in Christ the Son.